Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be adding an eGPU to this mini x86 board that I recently took a look at on the channel. By itself, I was actually really impressed by the performance of this little board, and if you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically, what we have here is an 11th gen Intel i5 1135G7. We have those built-in XE graphics. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and a Kingston 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. I tested a lot of stuff in my initial video, but there is a way to get more out of this board because it does have Thunderbolt built in. Now, when adding an eGPU to something like this, the higher we go with that eGPU, the more of a bottleneck this little CPU is going to be. And with the setup I have here, this i5 will be a big bottleneck, but it doesn't mean that we won't get great performance out of it. I'm shooting for 1440p performance out of this little board, and I think we can achieve it with this eGPU. Because what we're going to be using here is the world's first water-cooled 2080 Ti eGPU by Gigabyte. This was actually sent over for review a few weeks ago, and I haven't gotten around to it. I have tested it in my spare time on some laptops, but I thought it was a perfect time to add it to this tiny board. Like I mentioned, of course this i5 1135G7 will be a bottleneck for this 2080 Ti, but I still think we can get some pretty good 1440p performance out of this thing. Now when it comes to the i5 CPU that I'm using in here, most of the time when they're in laptops they're running at 15 to 18 watts, but this one here we can run at over 28 watts so we can get the max performance out of it. So let's go ahead and get this set up. I've already got my board ready to go, Windows 10 Pro installed, got my RAM installed, power's plugged in, and HDMI is going to this Pixio 2K monitor. So right now we're running this board off of the built-in XE graphics. I'm just going to kind of get the scale going up a bit because it's really hard to see at 1440p on camera. In the past, I've made a lot of videos of eGPUs running on single board computers, but I've never run across one with Thunderbolt built in, so this is going to be super easy. We don't need any M2 adapter or anything like that. We just need an eGPU dock with Thunderbolt support. We're going to plug it right into the Thunderbolt port on this board. It should automatically detect it. I've already installed my NVIDIA drivers. And I saw a pop up in the bottom right hand corner. We got our RGB on the eGPU dock itself. We can actually run the games from this eGPU and still use the built in HDMI on the board. But I have noticed up to a 25% loss in FPS doing it this way. So on the back of the eGPU, we have three display ports and one HDMI. I'm actually just going to unplug the HDMI from the board itself and plug it directly into the eGPU. That way, I can get the maximum performance out of this thing. Like I mentioned, I've tested it both ways and I've noticed up to a 25% decrease in performance by running it through the native HDMI on the board itself. All right, so we got everything connected. As you can see, we have that 11th gen 1135G7, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and we have the eGPU plugged in, an RTX 2080 Ti. Like I mentioned, I've got all the NVIDIA drivers installed. First thing I wanted to do was run some benchmarks. First up, 3 Mark Night Raid with a total score of 38,692. And if you actually do a search for the 1135G7, this came in first place in the leaderboards for that CPU. Next on the list, Firestrike, 19,492. And finally, Time Spy with the 10,396. For a super small PC, these are some really impressive numbers, but of course we have a 2080 Ti attached to this thing. Moving over to some real world gaming. For this first game, I'm just filming the screen here, but then I'm going to move over to my game capture just to make it a little easier to see everything. First on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 1440p, ultra settings, everything's maxed out. I got an average of 119 FPS. Looks absolutely amazing at 1440p. And with this monitor being over 60 hertz, we can go up to 144. Definitely makes a big difference. I know it's hard to translate on camera because I'm filming at 60, but it's amazing. Next on the list, Doom Eternal, 1440p, Ultra, got an average of 89 FPS. You can take this up to Nightmare and get over 60 with it, but I think Ultra still looks absolutely amazing at 1440p, and it plays just fine. There's no doubt in my mind that we can get a lot more out of this game with a more powerful CPU attached to this, because we're right there at 95 to 100% on that CPU, but it's still really playable like this.
Fortnite, 1440p, epic settings, got an average of 132 FPS. I was actually hoping that we could get 144 out of this, and we can at medium settings, but when you go up to epic, it's just a little too much for this CPU. I'm a big fan of all the Marvel vs. Capcom games. I just had this in my Steam collection ready to go, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it. 1440p, very high. I mean, this is as high as we can go with it. It's going to max out at 60, but as you can see, this setup's going to run it at full speed. GTA 5, 1440p, very high settings. To tell you the truth, going into this game, I thought we'd get a little better out of it. I got an average of 65 FPS at 1440p, very high. I was actually expecting a lot more. Now taking this down to 1080p, I can get an average of around 122 FPS out of it, but at 1440 I only averaged 65, which in my opinion is still enjoyable at a 2K resolution. I mean, this game is playable. The final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. As you can see, we're at 1440p here. And the first test I ran, Ray Tracing Ultra. So we're maxed out here with Ray Tracing on Ultra. And I got an average of 38 FPS. But keep in mind, this 2080 Ti, even with a super powerful desktop CPU, won't hit 60 with these settings here. So I do think this is actually pretty decent, running this on a mobile CPU with an eGPU. But I still wanted to see what it would take to hit 60 with this setup in Cyberpunk 2077. So what I did was take a lot of the settings down. And here it is with a low medium mix, no ray tracing, 1440p on this little setup. Got an average of 61 FPS. And in some cases you still see it drop below 60. So in the end, this actually worked out much better than I thought it would. We definitely have a bottleneck with that little i5 CPU, but to see this little board running these games like it was at 1440p is still pretty amazing. Now this would actually pair up quite well with the little GTX 1650. If you're interested in seeing something like that, just let me know in the comments below. I do have a Thunderbolt 3 Sonnet dock laying around that I can throw a 1650 or 1660 in. We're not going to see the kind of performance that we saw in this video, but it's definitely going to up the GPU performance of this little board, and it would be perfect for 1080p medium high setting games. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, if you're interested in just checking out this board's performance without any eGPU, definitely check out the first video I made on it. I'll leave a link for that in the description. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this setup or a similar setup with a lower end GPU, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.